So we have a special guest for you today. Uh, because I am on vacation, Pastor Brian, our worship pastor, is going to share a sermon in season for you today. Enjoy. Thank you, Pastor Mike. Um, it's an honor to be able to speak with you, to you, um, in your, I guess, living room, or if you're at home this morning, um, just kind of chilling out. Um, there's just nothing greater than being able to go to God's Word and to take some of that. I, I just pray that what I have to share with you today is an encouragement. But I want to jump in today's message. And like Pastor Mike said, I'm the worship pastor here at Family Church. Uh, my name is Brian Shaw, and I am so excited that I get to share with you. So, I have this question for you. Have you ever been starstruck? Think about it for a second. Have you ever been starstruck? Like you turn into that little screaming girl because you're meeting somebody you've always wanted to meet. Now I know for us men that are watching today, you would never show that uh, display. You know, you would never let somebody see you freak out like, oh my gosh, I can't believe I'm meeting this person. But inside you're probably feeling that way, right? Have you ever been starstruck? I mean, You've wanted to meet this person for the longest time. You have thought your whole life about meeting this person. How cool it would be to simply get to see them. This is something that you're going to tell your friends about. This is something that they're going to tell their friends about. Possibly you'll tell your family and they'll tell their children and their children. And it will go on and on. This will be one of those stories that will last a long time. And if you're watching, you're like, you know what, I'm not sure how that feels. Because I've never met anybody that's famous. I've never even got close to somebody that's famous. Take a moment, think about it. What it would be like, like to sit down and have lunch with them, or maybe to go to the store with them and just ask any question that you want. Think about that person just for a second. Somebody that you look up to. Maybe it's not even somebody really famous, but it's something, somebody that you've always looked up to and you've never had the chance to really get to meet them. Take a second, think about that. And then if you would, after you had that person's name, go ahead and put it in our comments. We want to see who it is. And then next week, we'll do our best to have them here for you. I'm just playing. That's ridiculous, right? We wouldn't do that. <laughs> There's no way. But seriously, when we think about being around somebody like a celebrity or maybe a famous, I don't know, sports star or a famous pop singer, right? It, it does something to us, okay? For myself, this only happened to me, maybe it's only happened maybe once or twice. It hasn't happened very many times. But uh, I can remember a few years back, actually this has been about 10 years ago, so I still remember it. Uh, about 10 years ago, I was given the opportunity to go to a concert of one of my favorite guitarists and also one of my favorite worship pastors. So he's kind of got the two things going for him that I love, and uh, his name's Lincoln Brewster. And so I went to this concert of Lincoln Brewster's, and it was, it was amazing. After the concert... Uh, they had one of the autograph lines that you get in, you know what I'm talking about. So I got in, I got in the line, and, and I'm waiting to get the autograph. And I'm such a nerd that I had already purchased the instructional DVD of his to play guitar just like him. I still cannot play guitar just like him, but I'm working on it, okay? It's all good. So I got in line, and I got up there. I gave him the DVD. He autographed it for me. I was like, this is so cool. I'm getting to meet him. I, you know, I said things of high praise like, your music has touched my life. And, and I, I just, you know, you're such an example of how to live. And all those, you know, corny things that you say when you meet somebody that's famous because you don't know what to say. And I was just impressed by the whole thing. It's a, it's a memory I haven't forgotten all these years later. A couple years ago, my sister sends me this picture. And I pull it up. And I got my phone. And I'm like, who is this? what is this? Um, I really don't know. And it's a little blurry of this guy. And I'm thinking to myself, like, I don't know who this is, but she's kind of freaking out. Like, can you believe who I'm getting to meet? And I'm like, are you really meeting them? Because they seem kind of far away, but whatever, that's besides the point. So I'm like, okay, all right, all right. Um, and I'm not going to drop the name of this person, but I'm going to give you a couple clues. Now, it's Sunday, and you probably thought, you're not going to get to hear Pastor Brian sing. And I know, many of you just want to hear me sing. <laughs> I'm just playing around, right? But you probably know a couple of his songs. Pretty famous pop star, all right? Uh, one of his songs goes like, is it too late now to say sorry? Yeah, you probably know that one, right? Um, <clears throat> one of those goes like, I wish I was your boyfriend. I never let you go. And if you don't know those two songs, you might know this song. And it goes like this. Baby, 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 ooh. Yeah, that's right. So she was pretty excited. Only, like, she didn't really meet him. He was sitting, like, three seats in front of her at a conference. But whatever. The point I'm making 
is it's easy to elaborate sometimes that you've met somebody that's famous. It's really not that hard to do. And in today's age that we live in, we live in a crazy time. You can kind of meet anybody that you want to that's famous. You can go to your Instagram. You can go to your Facebook. You can spend tons of time researching. And what I like to call it is being the ultimate stalker. You can stalk this person to, to you know more about this person than they know about themselves. I mean, you know every little fact you could possibly know about them. And you can just kind of live your life through someone else, right? And uh, that's not necessarily a good thing. So why do we strive to be around people of importance? Why do we want to look up to people? Maybe it's because they look better than us. Maybe it's because they have more money than us. Maybe it's because they have, um, let's see, talent that we don't possibly have. All these things, all these accomplishments and what they have is pretty much the reason why we want to look up to somebody, right? But that's not necessarily a bad thing. Um, Unfortunately, these things can lead us and put roadblocks in front of us and stop us from having our own success. I mean, we want to strive, I'm sure, to be great, but we can also idolize those of such greatness. And for some of us, well, probably most of us, we forget how great we actually are. The good news is we're not the first ones to deal with something kind of like this. You see, there's some guys, these three buddies, they dealt with the same kind of thing, but you see their story is that they were forced to give honor, recognition, and here's the key word, worship to the king of that day rather than God. I mean, can you imagine being forced to give worship to something other than God? As Christ followers, we go against culture. Our faith and what we believe will be challenged. It's just a matter of fact. Today, I'm going to give you the story of these guys. I'm going to pick out some key points that I believe is going to get you closer and stay closer to God. So let's pick up their story. Okay, so in the Bible, in Daniel chapter 3 is where this all begins. This is their story. I'll summarize a little bit of it from chapter or verse 3 to verse 6. And pretty much this is what's going on. The king of that day that I just told you about, his name's Nebuchadnezzar. And Nebuchadnezzar, um, he is known for building things. He, he puts his hands to work, or he puts other people's hands to work, I should say, and they build things. Well, one of the things that he wanted to build and did build was a statue of himself. Now, Scripture tells us that this statue is 90 feet tall by 9 feet wide. Now, if you're trying to get an image of how tall that is, it's really tall. If you're at home, your house, I don't know, maybe your ceilings are nine feet, excuse me, nine feet tall. Maybe your ceilings are um, really tall ones, you know, like if you have an entryway, there may be a 12-footer or something like that or 15. So imagine stacking those several, several, several times on top of each other. Nine feet tall, this statue of Nebuchadnezzar, by nine feet wide, very wide as well. So, He says, I'm going to make this statue, and it's not just good enough that I'm going to have a statue of myself, but I'm going to have people worship it. Actually, everybody's going to worship it. And just to make a point, I'm going to call for the officials, the governors, everybody in power from around the area to come and bow before the statue. And here's something cool. They're going to bow before the statue while music is being played. And as a worship pastor, that makes me think they were having worship. They called for all these musicians to say, when we play our music... You go ahead and bow, okay? Worship the statue that Nebuchadnezzar had made. So, what else happens? Well, there were some astrologers in the area, and they got word of a few guys, the three buddies I told you about before, not wanting to bow. That's right. And here's why, if you didn't bow, here's here's the thing that's going to happen. Nebuchadnezzar made this point that I'll let you in on. He said, If you're not going to bow to the statue, there will be a consequence. And here's the consequence. You're going to be thrown into a blazing furnace. You're going to be thrown into a fiery furnace is what scripture says. So these guys, these three men, they decided not to bow. And we'll pick our story up there. In verse 12, it says this. But there are some Jews, Shadrach, Meshach, into Bendigo. And like I said, the astrologers went to the king and said, listen, there's these guys. They're not going to bow. 
So Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, powerful names. Maybe you want to name one of your kids that in 2020. Hey, why not? 2020 is crazy, right? A little Shadrach. But whatever. So Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who you have put in charge of the providence of Babylon. So they were important men. They have paid no attention to you, your majesty. They refuse to serve the gods and do not worship the gold statue you have set up. These guys sound to me like they knew how to keep their focus on God. They were not worried about the culture around them. They weren't just on their Instagram or their Facebook spending all their time living their life through someone else. They had their sight on God. Let me tell you this. Just because you have your sight on the right thing does not mean that hard times won't come your way or trouble won't come your way. We all see this happen. Have you ever felt like, man, I'm following Jesus. Everything's going good. And then all of a sudden, something happens, right? And it starts going bad. Just because you go through trials here does not mean that you do not have faith or the power of the Holy Spirit in your life. The fact that hard things are happening to you is not a lack of faith. Listen to this. It is simply a challenge in the season. So what happened to these three guys? Well, the king was so furious that these guys would not bow. It says in chapter 15 that they were given one more chance to bow when the music started to play. Now, this is what I want you to really hear. Chapter 15. But if you refuse, this is Nebuchadnezzar talking to Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. If you refuse, you will be thrown immediately into the blazing furnace. And then the king asked this very important question. And this is the question that he asked these three men. And then what God will be able to rescue you from my power? What God? What God can save you from my power is what he's asking. Today, I entitled this message, Where Does Your Power Come From? Now, if there's people in the room, we could ask that question to each other. Where where does your power come from? But since you're online, you can ask that question in the chat. Where does your power come from? Some of you this morning said, hey, my power come from my cereal that I just ate, man. It's early, you know. My power came from this coffee that I'm drinking. My power came from this water. But all seriousness, where does your power come from? You see, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they didn't need to defend themselves before the king. They told the king that God could save them from the king's power. And in chapter 18... Or verse 18, excuse me. Verse 18, it says this. But even if he doesn't, we want to make it clear to you, your majesty, that we will never serve your gods or worship the gold statue you have set up. Now, this made the king really mad. The king got so mad that he said, okay, guys, if you're not going to bow before the statue I set up, then let's turn up the heat. Let's make it a little even hotter because I guess a fiery furnace in general isn't hot enough, I don't know, but let's turn up the heat, okay, let's make it seven times hotter, seven always has that, um, that number actually just means uh, completion, right, that it was perfect, so maybe he thought, hey, seven will be a perfect number to burn these guys up, verse 22 goes on to read, and because the king in his anger had demanded such hot of a fiery furnace, the flames killed the soldiers as they threw the three men in, so get this, there was these soldiers that were throwing Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego into the fire. Because it was so hot, before they could even get them in, the flames ended up burning up the soldiers that were supposed to throw Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego into the fiery furnace. Right? It burned them up. Because God, I want you to get this, God was with them before the fire. God was with them before the fire. God's been with you the whole time. God was with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego even before the fire. In the scripture, it even says that they had to actually go into the king's courts. They actually had to be presented before the king and tell him that we're not going to bow. God was with them in that moment as well. God was with them before the fire. Let's continue this story. We don't have too much of it left. So Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, securely tied, they fell into the roaring flames. But suddenly, Nebuchadnezzar jumped up in amazement. And exclaimed to his advisors, didn't we tie up three men and throw them into the furnace? Yes, your majesty, we certainly did, they replied. Look, he said, Nebuchadnezzar shouted, I see four men unbound, walking around in the fire unharmed. And the fourth looks like a god. Well, it was. Then Nebuchadnezzar came as close as he could to the door of the flaming furnace and shouted, Shadrach, 
Meshach and Abednego, servants of the Most High God, come out. Come here. So Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego stepped out of the fire. Then the high officers, officials, governors, advisors crowded around them, saw that the fire had not touched them. Not a hair on their heads were singed or their clothes didn't, were not scorched. They didn't even smell of smoke. Wow. What an incredible story. God was with them before the fire. God was with them in the fire. And one thing is clear to me in this story is that they knew where their power came from. They knew exactly where their power came from. They weren't going to give in to current culture. They had made the decision to worship the one true God. I think about the time that we live in and uh, how it's easy really to focus on things other than Jesus. Um, We're told right now that we're living in unprecedented times. You know, the olden days, you remember those olden days? January and February of this year. Yeah, there's some good times, right? Um, we're told that those are no more. But I like to go to scripture. In John 16, it says, In the world you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Jesus has overcome the world for you. Be of good cheer. You know, you think it would probably be easy for me in the position that I'm in. Well, not literally in the position. I'm sitting in a chair right now, and it is easy. It feels really nice. I hope you're sitting on your couch as well. But my point is, you think it would be easy, right, sit in the position that I'm in, to have my mind focused on God all the time, to be thinking positive, to say, God, I know you got this all figured out. But for me, there's many distractions, and I'm sure there are for you as well. I think the thing that can distract us the most is fear. You see, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they weren't distracted because they weren't afraid of the fire. But for us, right, we may have a fear, a fear of not being accepted, maybe a fear of not living up to our own expectations, maybe a fear of missing out on something, not having enough during this season, fear of what others will say about us, and the list goes on and on. So we must remember that our power is found in Jesus. Our power is found in Jesus. When culture around us tells us, hey, you should be afraid of living in these kind of times, We choose to follow the Prince of Peace. In 2 Timothy 1.17, or 1.7, it says, For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. God's plan for us is to live a life full of faith and not fear. But I wonder what would have happened to Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego if they did decide to bow. If they they decided, hey, we're going to follow the crowd. Um, We're going to go ahead and, and... bow to this statue that the king has ordered us and decreed us to bow to. We're going to hide the fact that we serve God. I mean, come on, flames are really hot. And it's just going to be a whole lot easier. But there's more to this. This was a turning point in their lives. This told the king that even if God doesn't save us from the fire, we'll never serve your gods. Hmm, a turning point. Have you ever had a turning point in your life? I want you to tell you my turning point. My turning point in my life was like a year after I got married. And uh, Leah and I, my wife, we felt this calling on us, especially myself, to go and pursue being a worship pastor even more. I already had some training, but I really wanted to go to the next level. And so God took us from Ohio, where we're originally from, to Colorado Springs. And in that time, um, I was going to school. We moved out there. And guys, let me just be completely transparent with you on this. We didn't have hardly any money. We had no place to live when we got there. Um, Literally no place. If it wasn't for our closest friends keeping us for a few days so we could find a place to live, we would have been living out of a hotel, homeless. Um, We had a part-time job at best. And we really didn't have the best game plan, right? But we knew that this is what God had us do. And we said, well, even if it doesn't all work out, we're going to follow God. We're going to do what we're supposed to do. There's no plan B, no turning back. So God supplied. A job opened up for Leah. I was able to go to school the whole time. He took care of our needs. After graduation, um, I became a worship pastor at a church for four and a half years in Georgia. And so we moved again. And I just remember during that time that God took well care. He took care of us the whole time. But um, as that was going on, 
you know, we were able to purchase a home. We were able to have a, our first child. And everything seemed to be going pretty smooth. But in a short moment's notice, um, I just wasn't able to stay on staff at the church. And we found ourselves in a position where we had to sell our home. Maybe some of you know what that feels like. And we had to really rethink things and, and decide, okay, I don't know really what's going on, God, but I already made the decision. There's no turning back, right? I'm going to follow you, no plan B. And so it was a hard season, about for a year and a half, during quite a few transitions and moving back home to be around family. I just remember one of the things I don't really enjoy doing is mowing the grass. Now, some of you men out there, you're online right now, and you're like, how could a guy not enjoy mowing the grass? Bro, it's just not my thing, okay? So I don't enjoy mowing the grass, all right? Just whatever. But I'll get the chore done. I like it to look well. So I'm mowing the grass. I remember God speaking to me during this time. And uh, just, it, it was one of these seasons where I knew that things were going to change again. And he just spoke to me, everything that you thought you had lost, I'm going to restore. Everything you thought that you, you invested in, it's still there. Your treasures just aren't on this earth, but they're in heaven. Keep your head up. So there I am mowing the grass. And every time I mow the grass, I could hear God speaking to me. I began to pray and thank him for what he had done. Thank him for where I'm at. And what happened? Well, you can see today where I'm sitting, that God opened up an opportunity once again to be able to serve him and lead worship and to do that to, to you today as I just give you the message. God was with me through it all. In this moment, in this life, in a moment's notice, things can change. Anything can change. But remember that your power is found in Jesus. Anytime you follow Jesus, you're going to have to share the why. Why do you follow Jesus? This is going to happen. You're going to say, hey, I know my power's found in Jesus. You're walking around. You're feeling pretty good. You got your new suit on like I got on this morning, right, just for Sunday. I got this, just a little, little tidbit. I got this because it was my birthday, and my, my son, he, he has a fast suit. And so he said, hey, Daddy, I got to get you a fast suit. So I thought, hey, I'm preaching this morning. And uh, I was raised Pentecostal, so I thought if I start running around, I have my fast suit on. But that didn't really happen. So I still wore it, right? So there you go, Preston. Thank you, buddy. But you're going to have to give the why. You're going to have to give the why. Why do you follow? My little boy that's four years old, he always asks the question, why? I went into the living room just the other day, and I said, hey, Preston, we need to comb your hair because we got to get ready for school. He said, why? I said, because that's what we got to do, buddy. We got to get ready for school. He was like, hey, we need to brush your teeth because you got to get ready. Why? <sighs> It's always a why. Kind of a good thing, right? And then just yesterday, I walked in the room. He's watching a movie. I said, hey, Preston, what movie are you watching? He looked at me. He said, why? I said, bro, that makes no sense. <laughs> the why is important. So why? Why do we follow Jesus? Because the Bible is true. The word of God is living. It's life for those who believe. Jesus, the son of God, is the way to the father. It's through him. The story I'm telling you today and sharing with you about the three men that went into the fire, it's true. When I started researching the story, I came across some historical evidence of this time period. Now, one of them was just simply a picture of what they believed was the pedestal that had the statue on it. The pedestal itself that had the statue of King Nebuchadnezzar, they believed that that statue alone was about 40 feet tall. And then another one that I came across, and this one's gotten a kind of a, a, a funny name, um, a uh, I don't even know if I'm going to say it right, but I'm going to try to say it right. Coliform, the, the, what that is, a coliform uh, script is, and I'll spell it for you, C-U-N-E-I-F-O-R-M. What this script is, it's the earliest known system of writing. Now, why is this important? Because it's important because of the, uh, the tablets that it was put on. They're really small, and they write on them. It's important because it shows that there was evidence of this time period, okay? So... There's actual evidence that scripture is true. And when you know that your power is found in Jesus, you'll need to stand your ground. That's the second thing I want you to remember. Stand your ground. Things change when we stand our ground. Many of people are going to say something's different. When we stand our ground and we don't back down from what we believe, things are going to be different. People are going to start to notice. Some of us right now are saying, man, I can never do what those guys did. But I believe you can. But here's the thing. Your fire, what you're about to go through, what you're going through right now, might look different. So what do you do? You say, hey, if my fire looks like an addiction in my life, I get help. 
I said, God, I need your help, but I need help of others. So maybe you join CR, our Celebrate Recovery program here at the church. Maybe your fire looks like you offended someone or somebody offended you, and you need to ask for forgiveness. So you say, you know what? I'm putting on my big boy pants. I'm going to ask for forgiveness, and I'm going to mend this relationship. Maybe your fire is starting a ministry. It's burning in your heart. And during this COVID season, this might be the perfect time to start that ministry that God has always had for you. Your fire could be going after the degree that you've always wanted to achieve. So you go after it. But know this, that when we step out in faith and go after the things that have been burning inside of us, the outcome is usually way greater than we ever imagined. The story didn't just end with the three men being saved from the fire. Now, I'm going to pick the story back up. It says that Nebuchadnezzar said, and this is in verse 28, if you want to follow along, praise to the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. He sent his angel to rescue his servants who trusted in him. They defiled the king's command and were willing to die rather than serve or worship any god except their own god. Therefore, I make this decree. If any people, whatever their race, their nation, their language, speak a word against the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They will be torn limb from limb, and their houses will be turned into heaps of rubble. There is no other God who can rescue like this. Then the king promoted, I love this, the king promoted Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego even to higher positions in the providence of Babylon. Think of it this way. God was with them before the fire. God was with them in the fire, and God was with them after the fire. God showed his favor on Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. The outcome of these three men's story should have, or could have, I should say, been different. If they were starstruck by the king, if they decided to idolize the king, and go ahead, give in to the trend, bow before the statue, that's what everybody's doing, the outcome of the story would have been different. But the outcome of your story can be a whole lot different. When you're starstruck by the king of kings, it's going to be a whole lot different. I need to tell you that when you serve God, it won't just be an inward testimony, but it'll also be an outward one. People are going to notice. Your family's going to notice. Your, your spouse is going to say something's different. Your kids are going to say something's different. Maybe where you work, people will start to say, wow, the guy carries himself a little bit, a little bit different. Something's different with him. When you are starstruck by Jesus, you're going to tell everybody about your experience. It will be better than my experience meeting Lincoln Brewster. It will be better than my sister's experience getting to meet Justin Bieber. It will be something that will change your life forever. Here's what I want you to remember. Lean in. If you're sitting in your living room right now, lean in. I want you to remember this. God has not forgotten you. He hasn't turned his back on you. Just like he was with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. In, actually before, in, and after the fire, he's with you right now. Put your hope in Jesus. Know that your power is found in him and that when the enemy tries to attack you, because he will, stand your ground. Your power is found in Jesus. Stand your ground. John 10, 10, I want to leave you with this verse. It says this, that the thief comes only to steal, kill, and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. I want you to have life and have it to the fullest. Now, if you're watching today and you said, you know what? I've never made the decision. And, and maybe you're familiar with a salvation prayer, but you said, I never made the decision to follow Jesus. I can't say that I could follow Jesus like those guys did. Then today's your, your time. This is the moment that you can make that decision. You don't have to wait any longer. You can do it right in the convenience of, of your home with your coffee or your water. Maybe you're sitting there. Maybe you're driving down the road. If you are, be safe. But listen to this. Make sure that today you make that decision. It will be the greatest one that you've ever made. So I want to help you. And all you have to do is say this prayer after me. It's an easy prayer. Say this prayer. Dear God, I come to you just like I am. I believe that Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior. Jesus, I invite you into my life to change me and to make me new. Thank you 
for accepting me and making me new. Amen. Well, if you said that prayer today, we are excited for you. Not only us, but scripture even tells us that the angels in heaven are rejoicing on your behalf. We are all family. We're excited for you that you made that prayer. And we want to know. We want to know that you prayed that. So if you would take a moment, write in our comments section. If you're on Facebook, type the word in all caps. If you can do this in all caps so we can see it. Amen. Amen. On Facebook, YouTube. If you're on our church website right now, there's actually a way that you can raise your hand. There's a button on there that you pray that prayer. Make sure you click that button. We will be in touch with you. We're not just going to leave you hanging. I know that we're not in the room today. We're only online, but we want to get your information because we do have a book for you called Starting Point. And that book is a devotion that's going to take you through your first seven days, okay? What you should be reading, what you should be doing. How do I follow Jesus? It's always a really great question. We don't want to leave you hanging. So make sure that you do that. Well, as I close this, I just want to say that I love you and I thank you so much that I could have this honor to be able to come today and give you God's word. I hope it was an encouragement. Um, I'm going to pray and then we're going to go right to our offering part of the service. So let me just pray over you. Father, thank you for your word today. We know that it will never return void. That everything that has been set out, it will accomplish. We thank you for protecting us and keeping us safe during this season. As we end today's message, Lord, I pray that everything that we set our hands out to, to, that they would be prosperous and successful. Everything that we set our hands to. I pray your blessing over us. That God, we are blessed today. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, thank you once again. I can't wait till we get back, of course, to regular service in the room. It's going to take maybe a week or two. Who knows? But um, until then, make sure you go to Family Church. Share this. Let people know that church is still happening. It's just all online. Thanks again. Well, that was an awesome message from Pastor Brian that we just heard. I love that part when he said that God was with them before they made it into the fire. Just in the middle of these uncertain COVID times, it's a reminder that God has been with us not only during COVID, but before it even started. Well, it is offering time. And the last few weeks, we've been seeing videos on how we've been a blessing not only to local churches, but we've actually been able to support missionaries and churches around the globe. And today, I just want to remind you during this offering time of what Hebrews thirteen sixteen says. It says this. That do not neglect to do good and to share what you have, for such sacrifices are pleasing to God. Today I want to simply remind you of this, that God is pleased with your generosity and that it's not going unnoticed, but that he's seeing the good works that you are doing. So today if you've ever felt discouraged, you felt like you were invisible, you feel like you're not seeing a return on what you are doing, I want to remind you that God is still with you, that he is seeing what you are doing. Today, if you'd like to give, you can give on our website, and you'll also see a link pop up in the comment section that you can click on, and it'll take you to our giving page. Let's pray today. Father, we come to you today in Jesus' name. And Lord, we thank you for this opportunity that we have to do good, this opportunity that we have to make a sacrifice that would be pleasing to you. Father, I thank you that as we are pouring out, that you are pouring back into us. And we thank you for these things. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.